Essay 5, Reform of the University of Wales At present, only a small fraction of the University of Wales has anything to do with Wales. The rest is made up of failed and or imported careerists who are hostile to the Welsh language and anything to do with it. With the advent of a new Welsh Language Act, sweeping reforms are needed of this moribund and closed shop. It is about the only national university in the world whose staff does not speak the language. They have not yet heard of the despised Welsh language, but it is now official. The very word Welsh is a derogatory and perjurative term for a stranger. In reality, Welsh is derived from British Celtic, a beautiful and powerful language which crystallised out of Indo-European 6,000 years ago among the ancient peoples of the Iberian Peninsula. That language, British Celtic, <coughs> became the language of all Britain and related Celtic languages to languages of much of Europe. We in Wales are the last guardians of that living culture. We have fought very courageously for the language and so the University of Wales must serve the people of Wales. The latter is supreme authority in its university. The people is represented by the Assembly and by the Eisteddfod. Both have the right in law to govern the university. Other representatives of the people of Wales have similar rights. The first and major problem is that these rights are never exercised. So power devolves to small-minded individuals who set up little kingdoms among the campi. In my experience, the way in which these people are appointed is not known. It is doubtful whether any free competition is involved, so few are appointed on merit. The first reform measure is to make sure that a quarter of native people of Wales are appointed on true merit. That merit must include the ability to read and write in the Welsh, obviously, one, one might think. The Eisteddfod is among the largest cult cultural festivals in Europe, and all of it is in Welsh. The University of Wales was founded in 1893 at the Eisteddfod, so the university's staff must be able to read and write. In Welsh, of course. Why not? So the new Welsh Language Act should include a clause which makes it necessary for all staff inside any university, college or school in Wales to read and write in Welsh and know the language personally to a high standard. There is an underlying and underhand hostility towards the language and that is uh, completely illegal. It's a violation of human rights. We must shut the ethnic laundry down. Staff can only be appointed if they are rigorously fluent. No more pretensions, no more endless excuses. There are a hundred other universities in Britain who use the lingua franca English, which is 60% Latin. They can go there if they can compete and are good enough. A quarter of about 75% of staff must come from Wales. We are not open to holiday makers and the university is not a bed and breakfast establishment. This is true also on a broader scale. Areas in which Welsh is spoken must be heavily protected or the language will disappear as a living language. Uh, this, this warning has been issued several times by UNESCO. What is a people without its language? Those who are sympathetic to the language and cannot speak it must be encouraged, not browbeaten, otherwise they will turn against the language. That is much easier than learning it. There are millions of people like this uh, worldwide. Uh, many people from Wales who would like to um, learn the language and um, all of them would not like to see the language become extinct. 
However, staff inside the university of all places can never be allowed to be hostile to the language. They have the great, uh, greatest responsibility of all, and if they fail to learn the language, they cannot be employed. The second most important reform measure is equal opportunity. In my experience, there is no equal opportunity inside the University of Wales. Staff, in my experience, were appointed without comp competition, as I described in, uh, describe in Autobiography, Volume 2. The concept of tenure must be abolished because it is abused by people who are not appointed in open competition. These are the small kings of the Campi, on which no Welsh is spoken. Some of the historical source documents, the blog and other material on AIAS.us give overwhelming evidence for lack of equal opportunity. More accurately, there is ethnic prejudice and other types of prejudice against people of true ability and that is uh, completely intolerable. The third reform measure is close control by the people over the way in which these small kings behave. I recall vividly being subject to frequent uh, verbal abuse. I have uh, experience of corruption in the matter of appointments, of jobs being advertised but filled in smoke-filled rooms. When I was working as an SESC Advanced Fellow, the university breached contract in many ways. It failed to provide housing for government equipment, failed to provide office space, harassed my staff until they left to, to find other jobs. This is all described in Autobiography, Volume 2. <clears throat> One would not have guessed that this was the Hall of Fame group of the BBC. The university uh, administration belittled true achievement in a completely mindless way and went against the opinion of Sagorono Daniel. More accurately, one small king was allowed to get away with it until he destroyed a whole department. This destruction was allowed to happen, and now, of course, the department never existed. The fourth reform measure is to introduce new ways in which the quality of work is measured. The quality of work is measured these days by the immediacy of its impact, by feedback uh, activity to websites, uh, not by journal citation or purely subjective guesswork. The academic system is notorious for its attempts at monopolizing wisdom by close control of ideas. For example, applications for funding are allowed only by tenured staff and the right to apply for public funds must be extended to all. It, the funds must be distributed on true merit. The editorial system in a subject like physics is organised blatantly in favour of a narrow spectrum of ideas, ideas which have been shown repeatedly to be incorrect. The reformed University of Wales must not rely on these imported ideas. Importation into Wales is unnecessary. It is a process that denies equal opportunity and keeps the natives in colonial subject, subjection. There are equal opportunity laws, but they have no teeth. Quite obviously, no one speaks Welsh on the campi. In 1776, the answer to colonialism was uh, found a declaration of independence. So I advise uh, a closure of the university for three years, with the exception of the departments who teach in the language, such as uh, Welsh language, Welsh literature, history, Institute of Advanced Celtic Studies and so forth. The staff should be sent to secondary schools in the medium of Welsh in order that they be given a three-year course on the language, followed by an advanced level examination. If they fail or do badly, they should be replaced. If this is not done, the ordinary people of Wales must be considered as the true depository of learning in Wales, as has always been the case. 
the people has always the sa always safeguarded the language. Immigration into Welsh-speaking areas must be eliminated if the immigrants come in into Welsh-speaking areas and never make any attempt to learn the language. In such areas, housing and education will be very strictly controlled. And uh, since this essay was written, many of my suggestions have in fact been taken up. Uh, soon it will not be possible for anyone to get a job in Wales of any responsibility without a knowledge of the Welsh language.